Welcome everyone. Grab your coffee. I have my my Eeyore cup today. I hope everyone's having a nice day. I wanted to set my coffee down. Since my topic today is hair painting, I wanted to introduce um, my peanut. I don't know if you guys can see him because of light. But this baby was made by Avon Nather. Um, this is Peanut, which is a sculpt of my youngest son, Pearson. It was sculpted by Priscilla Lopez. And he has painted hair by Avon. So I figured he was a good one to share. He's hanging out with me today. While I talk to you guys, I have loved Avon's hair painting forever. So today I, I want to talk about painted hair, um, kind of like maybe the way I do it. Um, my name is Bobby Barfoot. I am the artist at Barfoot Babies. I'm also the owner of Trueborn. Uh, we produce vinyl doll kits for many artists and also silicone kits. Um, Trueborns.com is the website. Um, I wanted to uh, start with why people paint hair. So I know there are different um, things that are talked about. Some people think maybe uh, we paint hair because it's easier or like a lazier way to finish a baby. But I can promise you that if you're doing it correctly, it takes time and it's not easy. And it actually takes a lot of practice and skill to make realistic looking painted hair. So um, I can root. I know how to root. I, I rooted for several years uh, prior to learning hair painting. Um, the history for me in hair painting is that I was at Deeds. I'm sure everybody remembers Deeds, which is now um, evolved into the Rose Show. But in either 2012 or 13, I was at Deeds and took a hair painting class with Yvonne and never looked back. I fell in love with the art of painting hair and I absolutely adore it. So that's the reason I paint hair. Um, as far as the process goes, um, it does take time for some people. It can take as much time or more than rooting, depending on how you do it, how you root, how you paint. We all kind of do it different. Um, but initially, the process I use is to fully paint my doll, um, not seal it, but just get it painted um, so that all the colors are down, all the details are down. I do the hair painting last. Um, I have a few I'm working on right now. I have this prototype of Aussie. Um, I'm in the hair painting phase on him, same with Maddie, and a prototype of Johnny that I'm working on. Um, Aussie was sculpted by Priscilla Lopez, and you all know Maddie was the wonderful Bonnie Brown. And then Johnny was sculpted by uh, Lanka Polacek, I believe is her how you say her last name. So I paint the doll in full, and then um, what I do is we all have different ways of kind of mapping out how we're going to do the hair. I use a lot of reference photos. Um, I love looking up close-ups of newborn hair online. And I actually use just a, a regular pencil to kind of map out, you know, the swirl and the direction I want to go and, you know, where the, the hair is going to split over the ears and, and on the nape of the neck. And, and I'll just kind of draw a basic uh, map. And then at that point, um, I will mix the paint. I use Genesis paints. Um, I use the colors that I was actually learned in Yvonne's class, which is I'll use the Mars Black. And then um, I think it's Burnt Umber. It's the darkest brown. Let's see if you guys can see that. But I use those two. Um, that way the hair is not completely black. Um, the brown kind of gives it some different tones so that you can do more of a baby brown painted hair. And I use 
Mona Lisa paint thinner to thin out my paint um, so that I can kind of get the consistency I want. It's fairly watery, uh, which is why I end up, you know, kind of dabbing my brush a lot, but that gives me, I guess, more control over the, over the strokes of the hair. Um, so after I lay down my pattern, I, I use this amazing, what once was a fan brush. This is actually the original brush set that I got from Avon in 2012 or 13. I can't remember what year I took her class, but I have used these religiously since then. I have never gotten new brushes and they still work great. So thanks Avon for quality brushes. So I use my cut fan brush um, to kind of lay down a base pattern of hair. I do uh, very lightly and the way you hold the brush and flip the brush and move the brush is going to change uh, what, this, what the hair looks like. I use this for just kind of like an under layer to, to kind of know where all the individual hairs are going to go. Um, I'll usually bake at that point and then I'll go back in with my cut really fine liner brush that is cut even finer at the base so there's a bunch of hairs cut off so that it ends up just leaving a little little tiny tuft of brushes. This is where all your fine hairs come in. Um, this is where you're going to do, I, I use this for eyebrows, um, the fine hairs on the, on the face, on the forehead, um, and all the individual hairs, which um, I don't know about everyone else, but I tend to paint almost all my hair individually, which is why it takes me so long. But I like the result, so I kind of stick with that. Um, this part takes the most time, obviously, because I have to darken up certain areas. I have to go back in and, and fill in the light areas because pretty much the whole head has hair. It's just the direction that it goes. So there's a lot of hairs to paint. Um, I also use this brush to go back in um, around the swirl, um, the sides of the, above the ears, on the top of the head where the hair tends to be thicker and the nape of the neck. And I don't always make all hairs straight. So even if I'm doing a straight haired baby, some of the hairs are going to have some little wave to them or maybe even be going a different direction than the rest because obviously real babies don't have absolutely perfectly straight, no hair out of place. That's not realistic. So I try to make it um, a little bit more realistic. I'm going to see if maybe you guys can see what I'm doing on my prototype here. So I try to take take those hairs and make them, you know, not all perfectly straight. And that gives it some realism. Um, the last brush I use is this one. This is more of a thin moppy type brush. I actually don't even know what it's called. I just like it. Um, this is used for shading. So when you want to go in and shade um, the areas where the hair is thicker, because um, it's going to cast some shadows and stuff. The crown area is usually shaded above the ears, nape of the neck, you know. Um, a lot of times on the top of the head, this is my Maddie, I'm working on her hair. Um, that's, I, I put shading there because that's just where the hair is thicker, so it's going to cast a, a darker shadow under the hair. Um, that's kind of where I come from with that. Um, I do blend the shading once I once I shade it. I'll blend it out so that it's not just like a circle of shading and then it suddenly stops. I kind of blend it out so it's like a an ombre, I suppose. Um, I I'll bake in between most layers that I do. Um, after I do shading and stuff, I will go back with my little fine liner and do the dark highlights. So the things that, um, let me see here. If you can see like around Maddie's ear, how some of the hairs are going to be, I'm not done with this one yet, but some of the hairs are going to be a lot darker where the hairs have all collected into a line. So, um, I do 
bake between layers to avoid smudging the previous layer because the hairs are I want them crisp and if they get smudged then they look kind of blended and then and then it starts looking like it was uh, airbrushed on or something and I don't like that look I like more of a crisp look um, the reason I use Genesis paints is because Genesis paints are very forgiving so because they're oil paints they don't set until they're baked if you make a mistake you can take you know the edge of a of a simple makeup sponge and just kind of erase it and if you need to put a little thinner on there you can do that and it, it pretty much erases um, quite well what you're doing so that you can redo it um, I always look and make sure I look like around the edges of the ears because um, sometimes as you're painting the the hairs you can touch the ear with the paintbrush and then you're gonna leave a little black mark and if you bake it on there well you've done it so I always try to check for you know any areas I might have touched something I shouldn't have because unfortunately black once baked is not a very forgiving color um, so we want to be careful with that um, I at the very end I do seal the hair on uh, the painted hair I know not everyone seals their babies when they paint but I feel like you know even if you're not one that seals the limbs which it's personal preference because I know it leaves a texture um, definitely seal the hair because the head is exposed all the time and you know a lot of changing clothes or laying on things it, it gets touched a lot so it's definitely important to to seal that to give it just one extra layer of protection um, do not seal the baby before you paint the hair that's probably one of the biggest things because the texturing that's left by sealant is very hard to paint hair on. It's like trying to paint over something gritty. It, it, the, the lines won't be fine and crisp and it kind of can bleed a little bit along the way and it, the end result is is can look okay but I just don't think it looks nearly as good as painting on a super smooth vinyl surface that's not yet sealed. So seal after you paint hair. Um, I recommend sealing the entire head, you know, face and everything, because you've got eyebrows that you've painted on and then maybe the fine hairs on the face. Um, if you're doing details like capillaries or amelia on the nose, you want to seal those as well. So I just seal everything and that way it's, it's all done. Um, my recommendation as far as learning to paint hair, I have had a few people say, do a tutorial. Um, I work alone a lot so I don't even know how I would go about doing something like that but I just I, I saw tutorials and things online I just for me the hands-on learning was key for me it's was absolutely the best decision I made if you guys can get to the doll shows and take a hair painting class um, I highly recommend it because it's that hands-on instruction and being able to bounce ideas off of the people around you um, is just priceless. Um, I'd say that for almost anything in the, in the industry as far as learning, whether it's skin tones, hair, um, sculpting, anything like that, the hands-on classes are the way to go. So I am a huge advocate for taking the time, investing in yourself to, um, to grow your skills. It, it's, some of them seem like a lot of money, but you're investing in yourself and you're an artist and you're allowed to do that so I recommend that everyone does that uh, this year at the Rose Show I am taking a silicone painting class with um, Susan Gibbs and I'm excited it's one area that I have not yet learned I have all the stuff here and there's been a ton of times I want to try and then I'm like I really want to see someone do it before I ruin a piece of silicone um, learning because I have a lot of questions so I don't want to bother someone online like oh how do you do this and how do you do that and this and this it's there's so many things to ask and learn seeing it with your own eyes answers a lot of those questions without even having to ask so I'm super excited to learn that um, and maybe see if if I've seen it before but learn how to paint hair on silicone and and see how that turns out because I love painting hair it's something that 
I've enjoyed for, I don't know, seven, eight years now. And I exclusively paint hair. I haven't rooted a head since I think 2014. But my goal with hair painting is realism. So it's getting the hair to the point where you look at it and you think, is that rooted? That's what I want people to say. Is that is that rooted? Whether it's a picture or even in person, I want them to question the realism of the hair, if it's rooted or not. And I mean, I'd say my goal for, for hair painting is if someone comes up to me and sees my doll in person and still thinks the hair is rooted until they actually touch it, I did my job right. I, I think there's goals for everyone in what we learned but for me that was I've had that happen before and it was like the biggest compliment ever like they had to touch it and go oh I thought that was rooted I tend to have a very fine um, touch I know if you if you were to <laughs> compare my work which I, I tend to do very fine work with some of the other artists like Yvonne who taught me uh, we have very different styles and that's another thing. I encourage people to adapt and evolve their own styles. Um, nobody would know I learned from Yvonne because my painting's very different from hers. But the skill set that I got, the base foundation of how to paint hair, I learned in her class. Came away with tools that have served me well and allowed me to evolve and adapt, adapt my own style. So um, again, the classes are priceless. I recommend you all take them. And... As far as a giveaway, today I am giving away a free kit. Um, it's going to be a surprise kit for the winner. I wanted to do this because I like encouraging people to try new techniques and uh, find your inner artist. Uh, I saw a post on Facebook yesterday about, um, you know, people asking, oh, whose baby is this and whose baby is that? And, there are certain people's babies you can identify. Like you see it and you're like, oh, I know whose work that is. Um, I love that we all have our own styles. I love that we all can adapt our own ways of painting and it creates so much versatility in the industry and it expands what the art is. So um, for my giveaway, what I wanna do is, um, I guess, Here's how I'm going to do it. So the, I'm going to ask a question and then I'm going to go back once I'm done with the video because I can't really see while I'm doing this. Um, and my phone's close by, but I'm like, don't have my glasses. I can't see good. So when I'm done, I'm going to go back and see as far as the order that things were done. Um, I just wanted to to have, you know, the first person to tell me the year that, that, that they became friends with me. You know, like either on Facebook or met me in person or whatever. Um, that person's going to win a kit. So I assume everyone watching is on my Facebook friends list. So, uh, when did we become friends? You know, post it and someone's winning a, a free kit. I'm going to send it to your house and, uh, you can use it to try something new. Um, uh, try painting hair if you don't know how. I'd say everyone should at least try it. Just kind of like I recommend we all try rooting. Rooting for me was literally like backbreaking. I have not so great eyes anymore and so rooting one hair at a time it's it strains my eyes a lot and I do wear glasses when I paint hair but the I guess it's the looking down part and it's it just is like hurts my neck and I sound like a wimp but the hair painting for me I tend to do it sitting up so I, I tend to be a lot more straight I guess and it doesn't hurt my neck and back so I do appreciate that about it. Um, I pat everyone on the back that can root hair well because it is not easy. Um, rooting is, is a skill and it's a very difficult skill to do well. Um, to execute it, you know, perfectly is not easy. So kudos to all of you that, that root hair and to you who are painting hair or learning to paint hair because it's also a skill that has to be refined and it's not easy. So don't assume painted hair babies are of less quality than rooted hair. I have seen painted hair babies sell for 
five times what I sell my babies for. It, it's, it just all depends on the artist and the execution. So the quality of painted hair can be absolutely outstanding. And I know a lot of people who are what I consider far better than me at painted hair, and I admire them greatly for the talent that it takes to actually make hair look real when it's painted. So um, make sure y'all try it and uh, don't give up. It's, it's not easy the first time around. Um, it just takes some refining and things like that. So if anyone has any questions about hair painting, I am happy to answer those. Um, you can just post them on this post and I will do my best to answer you. I am not the best in the world. I, I enjoy it and I'd like to think I do all right, but I am always learning and trying to get better. So I'm happy to help anyone if I can. So um, post down below and let me know if you have any questions. As far as um, the winner, I will post that as well and uh, get your address from you for the kit that you're gonna win. And uh, I think that's about it. I hope you guys have a wonderful day and um, enjoy your dolls today. I will be painting, painting away on hair today. So um, have a great day. Enjoy your coffee and enjoy your dolls. Bye everyone.